If hiring virtual assistants or getting employees to help source products for your Amazon business is in the cards for 2024, SellerRamp actually makes it really easy to manage your employees with the Google Sheet integration. How's it going, everyone? My name is Alex with SellerRamp, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to set up your Google Sheets with SellerRamp, how to get employees set up with your account, and then how to use SellerRamp and the Google Sheet feature to manage your employees and their leads. Let's get onto the desktop version of SellerAmp so I can get started. So if you go to your SellerAmp.com subscription and you go to the Google Sheets feature, click that drop down and then click setup. And that's going to take you to all of the current Google Sheets that you have. Or if you don't have any set up yet, this is where we can get started. First of all, you're going to want to have a Gmail account or some Google account so you can connect that here. I highly suggest making one for your business so you can have all of your Google Sheets separate from any other personal sheets that you may have. Now we're going to open a new sheet. We're going to be creating our sheets for our employees. This is one of my favorite features of the Google Sheet integration because you can track all of your own leads with these Google Sheets as well as track all of your employees' leads and determine you know, how well they're sourcing. So depending on how many employees you have or how many you plan on managing, it's easiest to assign the title of the Google Sheet to either the employee's name or if you assign an employee number, you're going to you know, obviously title the that of the employee number. So for example, I will just put my own name in there. And that's going to be, you know, this Google Sheet is only going to be used by me or by the employee, you know, using with that name. So then we want to make sure the field mapping is set up correctly because we're going to be the ones reviewing these leads. And we want to make sure that we're understanding that the products that they're putting in there have the right metrics that we look for. So uh, everything that's defaulted here is actually going to be pretty useful for us, right? We have the date that they exported it. We want to make sure we're checking when they're finding these leads. Obviously, the product name, ASIN the Amazon URL, all super important. We want to be able to look up the product on Amazon through the ASIN. We want to know what the title is, right? Is it a two pack? Is it a three pack? What color? What variation is it? And we want to know what cost price they found this product at, what they expect us to sell it at, right? This is all good metrics to help you manage your employees. If they just put a cost price without the sale price, we want to understand, do they know what we should be listing this at, right? If the price is all over the place, on the sales history chart, we want to make sure that they know how to price this product correctly to just give them a better understanding of selling on Amazon in general. All of these things are good learning experiences for the employees, so it'll help them find better leads in the future. Profit and ROI are great metrics to look at. Those are some of the first things that I look at when I manage my employees' leads uh, because we want to know how much profit are we going to make off of the lead that they found, whether it's good or not, and then how much ROI. The source URL is going to tell us where they actually found the product from. So I tell all my employees to copy and paste the URL of the product that they're looking at into the section. And then it's going to make it really easy for me to find the product and be able to add it to my cart and purchase it. And then I have that Amazon URL to refer back to the Amazon listing so I can also make sure that the metrics they were looking at are correct. The notes section is really important because I want my employees to explain to me how they got that cost price. Did they use a discount? What discount code did they use? Was there a buy one, get one 50% off site-wide sale? What information do I need to understand how they got the cost price? Because if I want to replan this in the future, I want to make sure that I understand how they got that price so I can replicate that in the future. If you wanted to add more information that gives you some context of the product, like maybe the sales rank um, or maybe your break-even price, some other things can be added to the Google Sheet. Otherwise, what's defaulted here is really a ton of information for you to make a decision on whether or not you want to purchase this lead. The next thing you want to do is click the test and write headers button. This is going to add labels to the headings of each column of the export sheet. So you don't just want them to export products and you don't know, you know, which one's the cost price, which one's the sale price, which one's the profit number. You want all those titles to be in there. And then you can double check that it went through by clicking open in sheets and it's going to open your Google sheet and you want to change the title to whatever you had, right? So I have Alex here. Um, it's not going to do that by putting the title here but when you search the google sheet it will have alex as the title of the google sheet so this is just when you open this google sheet up it'll have alex as well so you can cross reference okay so now we see all the titles are in here so when everything gets exported you are going to see all this information here this is super helpful again it's going to just keep adding line by line and you can sort by each column if you want you can freeze the headings. So when you scroll down, when they have a lot of leads, right, you're going to see which headings align with each column. So you're not mixing up cost price, sale price, profit, anything like that. I highly recommend freezing that. It's going to make it a lot easier to sift through this data. Once all the formatting is done and you know that the Google Sheet is set up correctly, let's get this transferred to our employee so that they can start using the sheet and you can track the leads that they're finding. All right. So for example, let's say we found this product here. We have our SellerAmp Chrome extension open. 
because we added that Google Sheet in there, if we scroll down on our Seller AMP extension, we can see this Google Sheet section, right? And then all of our Google Sheets that we created are going to show up here. So if you use some sort of password system to give your employees access to your Seller AMP account, they will be able to export the product to their specific Google Sheet. And then you wanna make sure that you are giving them access to the Google Sheet, right? A lot of times on uh, Google Sheets, you'll have to give access to that spreadsheet for them to review it, because if they make a mistake or export the wrong product, they can go in, delete the product, uh, and make sure all the information is correct when they are exporting products to the Google Sheet. But like I said, they're gonna add the cost price, the sale price, they're going to add a note on how they got that cost price. And then under lookup details, they can paste in the website URL that they found this product from. So in the future, we can go back to this exactly. So now we can click the name associated with the Google Sheet like the employee would to export it to that Google Sheet. All right, so we can see, like I said, I froze that top row so we can see all of the information we need here. We have the date that it was exported, the product name, the ASIN, so we can copy and paste that in when we're trying to list the product. We have that Amazon URL so we can go right to the listing when we need it to make sure that we have all the information we need. That $7 cost price, 23 sale price, $3 profit, and a 43% ROI. Now the source URL is in here as well. So if we want to go back to the product and look to make sure they have the right size, whatever it is, you can do that. And then in the notes section, right, it says when the note was put in and what the note is. Now we can talk about how we wanna manage our employees' leads. And the best way that I've found to do that is by creating an extra section, whether we label it notes, or we can add it from that Google Sheet setup page like we added the rest of these titles. But what I'm putting in this section is I'm analyzing the product myself and giving my sourcer feedback on what I liked and what I didn't like about the lead. I'm also marking a green if I purchased the lead and red if I didn't purchase the lead and then expecting the employee to review that information so they can make better decisions in the future. When you first hire your employee, you might find that there's more reds than greens, but if you're working with them, giving them positive feedback and showing them what leads you're specifically looking for and what criteria you want to see in a profitable lead, you're going to start to see more green leads show up and hopefully your employees see improvement over time. If you're giving your employees some sort of bonus structure, you can look back at all of the leads purchased on this sheet here from your employee, and you can use that as extra information to help determine how much this employee actually help you spend on inventory. The Google Sheet feature with SellerAmp is such a versatile tool. It has tons of different features, but it's such a great way to track your leads and track your employees. If you guys found this video helpful, subscribe to the SellerAmp channel, and we'll see you in the next video.